This one goes out for all the ones that we're going to lose July 1st, 2020. for hero clicks this is episode 302 i'm your sexy ranch hand called in s howdy howdy let's get rowdy Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, I have no venues to play at, Calder. I'm, I'm real mad. It's rough. It as I as I hear, it really do be like that sometimes. So, what we're gonna have to do now is talk about what made us happy this week. And Simeon, you you've already kind of <laughs> gave a pet peeve of the week, which is no <laughs> venues. So, but uh, what made you happy this week, my man? Uh, I tried out a new restaurant, and uh, it was it was super good. So I went out with some friends, and that was really nice. And then I got some ice cream from a place called uh, Coneflower. Yep, I didn't forget it. It's called Coneflower. And uh, super good ice cream. Yeah. There's like a weird smell in the air. Like they make their cones there or something. So it's got like this kind of cereal kind of smell in the air. But yeah, they've got a ton of uh, cool flavors and stuff. And super solid ice cream. So if you're in Omaha... Check out Coneflower, Coneflower in the uh, the you know Ritzy district. Uh, uh, it's called Benson. 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 Like the gumball guy from regular show Benson. Um, I love ice cream, so I'll, I'll, I'll need to go there sometime. What made okay. me happy this week was I got to do a lot of chores around the ranch uh, done. I fixed a lot of fence, fence around our house. Uh, I know this sounds like not fun, but what I did was I downloaded... 
Um, the latest episode of a bunch of Heroclix podcasts. I don't normally listen to Heroclix podcasts, and I thought, well, whatever, now's a good time to do it. Um, and I really enjoyed the Clickstaff Casualties of War. Um, I will say I don't like their normal show because I'm not really competitive natured and I really don't care about that kind of discussion. But I really enjoyed their casual show, Casualties of War. Uh, had Alex Cuse and Sam. Uh, no, uh, this had, uh, um, Sam? no, it wasn't Sam. It was, I, I know him. Oh my gosh. Jason Alvey. Jeez. I was oh, so yeah, bad geez. that it took me that long to get that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and it was just a really fun, like show. I just really enjoyed listening to it. So kind of a shout out to them. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah, what made I, me happy this week. I like that. Uh, they're, what do they call them? The lightning episodes, lightning round episodes. I don't um, know. I can't remember death. what they call them. Sudden death, right? Sudden death. Yeah. S- yeah. Similar. Um, yeah. Anyone listening, if you need a uh, competitive help for some reason, you want to get competitive. Uh, yeah. Click stuff is well, a pretty good podcast. I've heard um, now the normal, yeah, the normal this. shows, the normal shows fun. Uh, it's got, it's you almost always got Dan Powell and, I think Tyler Spees is usually on. Tyler Spees um, on. They've kind of got like a rotating. They had stock Scott Crampton of people. on in the episode I listened to, which is it was an alright yep. episode. It's just like it's not my discussion. Um, but you notice, I mean, I hear that if, if you don't play competitive, you might just be playing alone in some that's, fashion. Some <laughs> that's a different podcast. That's some way it's like podcast. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of the, HeroClix podcasts. There's it's a ton. Ridiculous. There's so many. There are so many HeroClix podcasts. Um, but, like, I checked uh, Borderlands or whatever. They hadn't made a show in over a year. Um, some podcasts are, like, really not up to date, you know? So some yeah. have definitely died, like, that I know are dead. And then some, like, might be dying. <laughs> might be dying. Um, but still, there's still a ton of HeroClix podcasts. For anyone that listens to it, like us, we're a HeroClix podcast. Let's talk about... Heroclix, not just Heroclix podcast, in the news section. Uh, no idea why I said news like that. Uh, WizKids tweeted, this is going to be the first thing we're going to talk about, and then we're going to go into all the cool spoilers from Gamma. We also have spoilers from Eternal Games, Clicks Off, Happy Little Hero Clicks, uh, etc., etc. Um, but first off, Fire Lord Sculpt. WizKids has been doing uh, a lot of things recently where they make a new version of a character and the style is very, very similar to an older version of a character. Um, I think I first noticed them do that in uh, Deadpool and the X-Force. That Wolverine was very similar to a different Wolverine. And we, I know there's, there are several modern age dials right now that are just very close to like the first time that character was made. And they, they've done this before. So do you think we're going to get like a, a 12 attack, 4 damage... 87 point fire lord barrier range combat expert energy explosion or they're just I, gonna make a normal I fire lord. do but what made fire lord like crazy is that you could carry a flyer and then they could do something afterwards mm. and the whiz kids post said modernized for 2020 he's dying to get a lift spelled like the uh, lift the driver car service i don't know why like he looks like he's, you know, like actually like lifting if that was a barbell or something over his head, like dying to get a lift. But then they spelt it like um, the car service, which makes me think maybe he does do his his carry thing, right? Maybe, yeah, whole... maybe he can be carried and then given an action, or so maybe he's got like some Sam Cap action going yeah. on, or maybe modern, ooh, modern I don't know Sam Cap. Except hopefully with better stats, go. since we're about to lose uh, what made Sam Cap really good. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and trudge right along. Uh, let's talk about the Fantastic Four, since we're already on Fire Lord. We have The Coming of Galactus, and this sculpt is humongous. They're showing us some inside, uh, what he looks like. We don't have any colored versions, but we do get to see two versions of Galactus um, here, and then we get to see head swap versions. So let's go ahead and talk about just Galen himself, Simeon. Man, that's a big base. Man, that looks really cool. Yeah, so all my hopes Ooh. are they're uh, very much verified. He's going to be on a 3x6 base, mm. or whatever that size is, something like that. Um, a approximately 18 inches tall is what they've said. Yep. Removable uh, effects, mm-hmm. including like the head, so you'll be able to kind of like customize him. Um, 
I I'm just super excited. He's got so much more detail than the original. Oh yeah. From oh like, yeah. These, these unpainted renderings. Um, these aren't even renderings. These are like the the printed out. Yeah. Like fully sculpted versions, but uh, mm-hmm. they're still prototype kind of phase. So you can have him like a fist. You can have him with uh, like power yeah. energy yeah. glowing around. You know. Um, and then you can give him like a like a head with horns, and I don't know what I, that see, is. I don't know if those are horns or like really smoky eyebrows. <laughs> like what is it, going yeah, on there, or could who, be. who that person is supposed to be? If it's like not Galactus and someone else, I've never seen Galactus that is you know big dumb helmet. So I'm I'm I am curious. Yeah, um, I know Odin once like head butted him and cracked it off, but I don't see, remember him having I whatever that, that is. That's pretty cool though. It's pretty sick. Good, good, yeah. good on Odin, man. Good on Odin. So yeah, that's Galactus. Yeah. He's the summer OP kit prize for this summer. For obviously the coming of Galactus, which is the second time yeah. we had a coming of Galactus event, which is cool. So maybe it's I gonna be. It, I think if it's been hot, like twelve years, <laughs> I think you can have another coming of Galactus event. People are gonna want him so bad. He's gonna have a crazy, crazy price depending on how hard he is to get. I imagine if he is like the end all, be all. Uh, winning prize for a summer event. He is going to be hard to get. I super hope that he's like the Tri Sentinel, and oh, you'll be able to purchase easier. him as well. Nice. I would hope so too. Because if not, then yeah, he's going to be. So question. Especially if they slap like a a fifty point retail click on him, that's like oh. got a like twenty. I was just defense. about to ask that. Like, do you want him to have a retail click? I don't. I. Okay. Neither I mean, do I. <laughs> just for the simple aspect that I. I kind of do because I kind of want to see people have to carry him around just for like the thirty oh, sure. or fifty. I, see, now I was that hoping that he would is. have like a three hundred point line where it's like a three hundred point modern viable Galactus would be really cool. Like just being able to play just Galactus on your team and like he would be just super viable in a three hundred competitive scene. I think that would be really hot. Honestly, I think yeah. he'd be sick. So if like that was a thing, I could totally dig it. See, in order to do that, he'd have to be like the 300 point con doomsday, except his stats wouldn't start bad. It'd be terrible. And yeah. yeah, like he would just have good stats at the beginning, and he would like every click is like a stop click, and he would only like get better. I don't know. I don't know how you would make him 300 modern competitive because there's so many good low there's point pieces. Although, right. like OG Galactus had like a 20 range, I want to say. So. <sighs> That would That's probably awesome. do it. That would definitely do it, I would say. 20 range would be pretty sick. Uh, moving on, we have Marvel Hero Click Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage. We see a generic Spider-Man sculpt. We see a... This isn't Poison or Venom or Carnage, but it's somebody who is on Brock's tombstone because they have a swirly for their... Might be like Toxin? Toxin, I don't maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know all the symbiotes' names. We see a very... Very uh, good-looking Mary Jane sculpt, if I do say so. It's a plastic figure. I'll contain my uh, contain myself here. <laughs> uh, we have a Red Goblin, which is uh, from a little miniseries, which is like an actual thing and not like a fake Venom thing that they're doing. Uh, we have the Symbiote Supreme, which is Doctor Strange's Venom. I'm calling it the Symbiote Supreme because that's what it's called in Contest of Champions. But his costume does look different here. And then we have a look at Pumpkin Bombs and a Venomized Baby Groot. Oh yeah. Why? Just I, why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't um, know what he, I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah. That baby Groot is not a chase because I can imagine that they'll just do a venom chase just to be like you know or venomized character chases. So just to I be was easy. I was imagining but, that the venomized characters were going to be the ones that are like weird, like the Leonardo da Vinci, the Spider Man Venom 1776. Like I thought those would probably all be the chases if they did. It was like yeah. their own character chases. Uh, speaking of that, we finally get to see a digital sculpt rendering of the Venom Da Vinci. That's cool. We get to see Penny Parker, st- sorry, Steampunk Penny Parker and her spider bot that doesn't look steampunk at all. Like, what? Um, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, and it looks humongous, by the way. Like, if you look at the base size that she is on, that robot looks huge. And then a samurai Peter Porker to go with your samurai Spider Gwen. I must have missed the comic where they were all samurais. But very cool. Yeah. Or if it was like cover art or something. I know the con uh, Spider Ham is really. Uh, he's not like the greatest piece ever, but he's, he is a tough cookie to crack. He's got like yeah. 
shape change and super senses on a 50 50 roll so it'll be interesting nice. to see what they do for him and then the final thing spider-man related we have the iconic issue of peter parker throwing his spider-man costume away and then walking away and it's it looks like it's three different sculpts here. Uh, there's a Spider-Man sculpt with the turning his head. You really have to look at this picture. It's like one to one, like the issue, um, and then it's Peter walking away, and then it's like literally the Spider-Man suit in a trash can, like as the sculpt. So either like the Peter Parker and the trash can are too spread out, and they're just both on the sculpt, and then maybe there's a Spider-Man that's also there. It's like flat and not three-dimensional on the sculpt. I don't know. Or if this is a few different sculpts we're looking at. I know you thought the trash can might be an object, Simeon. That would be hilarious. I uh, yeah. So <laughs> just looking at it, there's no way this like image they posted fits on a base. Like, yeah. It's probably like a work in progress idea that they were doing. Also, I have no idea what this figure would do. It's like I quit for two issues. Is that what this figure did? Like. What do you what do you play I know, and pay like point cost? Is it a resource dial? Is it like after four days, pull your suit out of the trash? I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, let's talk about the X Men. I who I sure do love me some mutants. Spoiler alert: I don't. I kind of hate the X Men. Um, we have Marvel Heroclix X Men House of X. Uh, we're gonna make an entire Heroclix set about the time where mutants were at an all time low. I can dig it. Um, no, I guess that's not that. That was a different thing, wasn't it? House of M is when mutants got. That was House Anyways, of M. That yeah. Was House of M. Excuse different me. House of, of X is something else I don't know about. Uh, we have a uh, lady with a glowy sword. She looks great. She's screaming. Uh, she might have multiple hands. She looks like she has silver colossus skin. I honestly can't tell. She looks like she's wearing like slippers, like robe, like bathroom slippers so that's hilarious we get a classic marvel girl sculpt wow sure i am happy we get to see uh <laughs> gene gray um and then we get uh blue fire ghost rider guy with the little uh sheets yeah. he's got bed sheets hanging off his wrists or whatever yeah long is. long um bracelets i don't know long bracelets like some i'm not gonna lie i have not been stuff. reading house of x so i'm oh. guessing the two people that aren't Marvel Girl are definitely like House of X characters. Oh, but, probably. Or at least closer to the super rares, because well, her sculpt looks like super rare worthy. This guy that's could a probably just be a rare. big effect. Um, yeah. And then you you said we have I didn't know who this person was a glob. Glob Herman, Jeez. the greatest mutant still, there ever I was. I still don't want to believe that that is a person. He's, in this. You um, like his superpower is yeah. you can see through him. And he doesn't it's, burn it's easy. Like, his eyes are really freaking me out. Yeah. It's weird in the comics, too. Uh, we get a Professor X with the carrying around Cerebro, I think. I think that's what we said that was. Uh, but he's walking. Yeah. So his and a weird effect. Cool. Super weird effect. Looks like a scorpion tail. Uh, I know it's supposed to be some psychic thing, but it's connected to his back going over his head. It looks very weird. We get uh, Kitty Pride, who is like a pirate with Lockheed and a really cool jacket, and she's doing a little jump, kind of maybe a, like one leg is phased, I don't know. But uh, the important thing is that we get a boy, Kurt Wagner, he's a night crawler. Uh, he's got a big puff of smoke, and he's got a sword. He's probably going to be a super rare. Uh, just because um, just because they, they hate me and they want to make me have to pay for Nightcrawler. But so far, House of X. Simeon, what do you want in House X? What do you want to see here? X Men. Oh set. man, um, we don't get any so, X Men sets, so I don't know what else they could possibly make. We almost never. The get only X -Men thing, <laughs> the only thing I know about House of X is that Gold Balls actually, oh, like, geez. kind of plays an important part. Um, so I'd like to get a new Gold Balls doing whatever he does in the comic. I'm not 100 percent sure what it is. I'll he probably just have to the read balls it. Appear out of his body. He literally just But it turns out, Calder, they're weird. like eggs that can oh, hatch mutants or something. No. no Anyhow, uh, no, that we've got like a uh, we've got like a um, apocalypse looking kind of face in the background of the image they posted. It, it do be looking so like an apocalypse. It's got that. Chin. I'd really like to get a modern one. Yeah. All right, so this is a normal booster set. Okay, we don't know if it's a normal. Yes, it is. It's a booster brick. They would say if it was something else otherwise. So it would be a small apocalypse and not a big apocalypse. Are you okay with that? A little small yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You like 
Mm, beggars Although, can't be choosers sort of deal. Yeah, he'd have to have like some pretty impressive stuff going on. Right. But to be better than the current one that I have, like the only one I can the run GSX currently, uh, he populist? doesn't have to be that much better. Yeah. yeah. Or how's this? It's an apocalypse, so you have to put together like the Iron Man from Nick oh. Fury. Yeah, I'd take that too. You'd take that too? Okay. As the right. long as I can equip, like, Apocalypse's head, like, gives me mind control, That'd and I can really just, like, weird. stick it on a character. I know he could, like, change his body parts and stuff, but I don't know if he can just chunk yeah. off his head and use mind control. Um, yeah, celestial I, armor and stuff. Yeah, you whatever, know. He, whatever he does. I would really dig a... I forget this character's name. Uh, it was a book book, not a comic book, like a book book. That was written like a blog, and it was called Wolverine's Worst Day Ever, and it's about this one student. No one is going to know what I'm talking about, but I want this guy to get clicked so bad. It's about this one student whose mutant power is that people can't notice him. He's not invisible. He can't, like, whatever, change his shape. He's not, like, Mystique or whatever. He's not. He doesn't blend in. He's not camouflage. People just literally would, like, not notice him. It's like, hey, dude, remember me? I was at that party, and you're like, oh, sorry, bro, I didn't notice you. That's literally his power. Like, he said, I could slap you across <laughs> the face, and you wouldn't know I'm in the room. And I'm like, that is such a great power, because he's just, like, a little introvert kid who writes on his blog, and eventually, whatever, he has to do an adventure with Wolverine, because everybody has to go on an adventure with Wolverine if they're an X-Men at some point in time, because Wolverine has to be a father figure for all these stupid young people. Oh, my gosh! Um, anyways... But yeah, like that's like the whole thing. He's like, I could play a tube on top of your head, and you wouldn't know I'm there. Like, I dig it. I dig this. I like. I, I probably reread that book so many times. It's like it's so dumb. Like, I just picked it up. I'm like, this is great. I love this. He just can't be noticed. What a mutant power. What a what a guy. So yeah, except Sabretooth, because you know he can smell you. Anyways, that's who I want in the X Men set. He won't get made. That's just a fact. No one else uh, cares. So because no one noticed him. Because no one noticed him. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Simeon. Uh, moving on to some more gamma, gamma stuff, we get to see uh, top dials for the Black Widow set. The Widow Cycle, 75 points, improved movement, 5 range, shell bolt, a little bit of indomitable, uh, not a vehicle. It's, it is Black Widow on the Widow Cycle. It's not the Widow Cycle. Um, but all the other Black Widows are also 75 points, besides the Chase, which is 100. Red Guardian is only 50. Um, I can't see... There's a Task Force Henchman. So yep. Taskmaster is going to have a task force. There's also a Widow's Spy, which might also just be a generic, like, I don't think there's going to be any Widow's Spies in the movie, to be honest with you. We have a 75 and 50 point Yelena Belova and a White Suit Black Widow, who is also uh, 75 points. Uh, the Shifting Focus Black Widows don't have Indomitable, except for one. Uh, I guess one and the bike. So it's it's not like, you know, whatever. Some, in, like, Captain America, who's indomitable across the board. It's more like Deadpool, where one has indomitable and some don't. Um, but, yeah, Red Guardian being 50 points is a bit of a bummer for me, but he is just worse Captain America, so I understand, like, why that is. His The sculpts look good. Uh, most movie sculpts are pretty bland in, like, their poses, but they normally have all right art deco, kind of a more realistic, less colorful art deco. Uh, but they look good to me. What do you think, Simeon? The old Black Widow stuff. Yeah, they're all, like, pretty dynamic. Um, all I can think is for 75 points and $15 a pop, that motorcycle is going to have to be interesting. Because be I'm, I'm super not going to pick up a ton of Black Widow stuff unless, like, the shifting focus is interesting. Because we already have so much Black Widow. I already have, like, somehow already have a Yelena. And I don't even, you know try like it's crazy but i don't know i'll have to watch the movie as well maybe if i think the movie's like super killer i'll pick up all the pieces red guardians are for sure taskmasters are for sure yeah definitely taskmaster um same here red guardian taskmaster those guys look fun in the movies but we get to see this is this is what i'm really excited about for gamma we get to see the top, only the front part of these cards. It looks like they're like glued to a wall or something. Like they look bigger than actual card size. Like, do, yeah. you, do you feel this? Like they're not card size, that they're just like printed like out of a, cards. Like, like a stuck what to is a poster. It? 
those like science fair projects where you yeah. just, like like blow up a picture and paste it on cardboard. Then there's yeah. a picture of like the carpet walkway in the background, and it makes me think this card is like way bigger than a normal HeroClix card size. So we have Doctor Fantastic and uh, the I'm Blue Batman. Prime. So I'm going to talk about Dr. Fantastic really quick. Uh, he is Earth X, Fantastic Four, Latveria, Ruler, Scientist. Latveria is a new keyword. We don't know his dial back, so we don't know his stats or his dial at all. So I can just tell you like his powers and stuff. That's all we know. But this is Mr. Fantastic from Earth X. Uh, Sue and Johnny are dead in Earth X. And then yep. so Mr. Is Fantastic... Uh, so is Doom. That's correct. Uh, and then Mr. Fantastic is in Doom's castle, pretending to be Doom. Uh, like, And he has to wear his armor and stuff so the Doom bots don't find him out. Uh, the Thing is alive, but the Thing is just leading a much normal like life with his wife and two kids. Like, The Thing has it way easier than any other member of the Fantastic yeah. Four uh, in Earth-X. So, and the reason Namor's on fire is because uh, yeah. him and... Franklin. I think it's like him and Doom... Was like that's what they led to Sue and uh, the UN. Yeah, um, and then they killed Johnny. Uh, Namor killed Johnny, and then Franklin like cursed him to be on fire. Yeah, uh, permanently like, on no, fire. Yeah, so permanently on fire. So if he leaves the ocean, he's he leaves the like, ocean. He's on fire. It's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and then Reed Richards gets mad depressed because he's a nerd uh, and his wife died. So uh, he has a plus ten points trait. We don't know what his normal point value is. Uh, but he has plus one 10 points. When a friendly character is targeted by an opponent's perplex, outwit, or probability control, after resolutions, you may generate a zero, f- zero 05 doom bot each time. So each time an opponent targets a friendly character with outwit, perplex, or prob, you get a doom bot for 10 points. Now, doom bots might have a thing where it's like, when this character starts the game, roll a d6, and they might be like one click or something. So sure, it might be a point sink. Um, but man... You can get a lot of Doom Bots in one turn. It's not even yeah. a four, five, six like roll to see if you get a Doom Bot. Just they use no max. Perplexer Prob. There's no max either. It's insane. So number one, this is cool. Because we know we're getting Doom Bots. We kind of would have to assume we're getting a Doctor Doom. It's an easy generic to make. He can just look like Doctor Doom or whatever without the cape. And then boom, you got Doom Bots. But it's also cool that they're using Doom Bots not just for a Doctor Doom, but also for a Mr. Fantastic who uses Doom Bots. He has no traits, though, besides that plus 10 point trait. He has a special attack power, which we can probably assume is his, like, last click. But we also don't know. But I'll just read it to you. It's protected pulse wave power. Once per game, generate a Franklin Galactus bystander. Uh, during Earth-X, spoilers for Earth-X, um, during the end, it, they find out that the Earth is just a celestial seed and they're just going to destroy it. Like, that's the whole thing about Earth-X, right? And in order to stop the Celestials from destroying Earth, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards, uh, calls, just yells like Franklin, right? Off into the cosmos, whatever. And then Galactus shows up, and we find out that Franklin became the new Galactus. and But, like, doesn't know he's Franklin Richards, right? And if he ever finds out that he's Franklin Richards, he'll probably just stop being Galactus. So he, like, it's a really tough thing for Reed to do, to have to, like, call his son here. But his son's so powerful, blah, blah, blah. It's really cool. It's a touching moment in comics. And then he has a damage power, which is stretch my own brain to the limit. Outwit and perplex, period, free. Choose outwit or perplex. Dr. Fantastic can use the chosen power an additional time this turn. So we can double outwit in a turn or double perplex in a turn as well, which is really sick. And then he has some stealth, plasticity, and sidestep for his speed powers. So he starts with stealth. I believe that's it, right? Like the starting one we first see is what they uh, what they start with. Yeah, right. so prob- it, yeah, starts with stealth on the first starts with probably stealth. two Starting clicks. Starting with jump. invincible, then impervious and toughness. So this could be a pretty beefy dial, but there is no indom. Like, there's a lot of damage reducers. There is a plus 10-point trait. Um, he has some support later, but we the biggest thing is we don't know if he is over 150 points or not and if we're going to have to see this rare on about a million Jason Wingard teams because he's going to have a crazy... And we don't know what the Franklin Galactus bystander does either, but if it's Galactus as a bystander and he it's a power action for once per game to make him, um, and it's also a special attack power, which makes me think it's the last click and it's not even a stop click, you know? Like, it's like a really situational thing. This yeah. is all hearsay. This is all whatever. I'm just spitballing here. I don't know what it actually is. Um, but we'll see. Um, to me... Unless his stats are really good. He does have Energy Explosion and Pensai. 
Um, I don't see him being more than 150 points uh, with no Indom, but we never know. And to go along with that being like on his last click, that is like very late in the story where like up until that point, he kind of just mopes around the castle. So I could definitely see that like a last hurrah kind of thing, mm-hmm. which makes Jason Wingard even sillier because yeah. he can pull it in for a free action twice. twice. And uh, Dr. Fantastic is going to like be delegated to trying to fall on the right click. So we'll see. Yep. Um, all right. Hit me with that. That sweet Batman goodness. All right. To go along with my singing from earlier. This is Oof. number 005B, the prime, the common prime from the DC set that's coming up. Uh, he's got real name Bruce Wayne, keywords Batman Family, Gotham City, Justice League, Detective, Martial Artist, and Police. Uh, one trait, or no, two traits, sorry. Uh, he has colossal stamina. That's actually really cool. Um, first trait is something when gone you can never regain. Free. For the rest of the game, Batman can't use the Batman Ally Team ability, and whenever he occupies a clear square and is given a range action to use Incapacitate, Mind Control, or Penetrating Psychic Blast, he can use Improved Targeting through Hindering and Out of Adjacency, and may instead target all opposing characters within Line of Fire, period. Mm. So, full range. Uh, so, yep. at any point... You can have him in stealth and then free action for the rest of the game, which is probably, I'm guessing if people are playing this, they're going to do that right away if they do it at all. So yeah. he's kind of like the Earth X, the, the skull, where you can mind control from across the map. Yeah. So like that's that's basically what he's going to be. We don't know how many targets he has. Probably just one. Uh, hard to say. He's also got, it seems that magic always has a price, which is Colossal Stamina. And then it goes into all of his powers, which are just light blue and dark blue powers. So, starts off with, am I blue? Mind control. Then he goes to Plasticity. Now she's gone, and we're through. Each plan done fell through, which is in his incapacitate power. Not a dry eye in the house. Penetrating Psychic Blast onto Mastermind. He does have Indom. There was a time I was your only one, but now I'm the sad and lonely one. Uh, so that's Mastermind and then Barrier, and then he gets Shape Change and Probability Control. Something you've worked very hard to conceal, what would I have to give you to make you lift your spell on Diana? I don't even... <laughs> is this that, a song? That isn't, that's not part of the song. That's, that's not like, part of the song. So okay. Wonder Woman is a pig in that episode. Um, uh, and he, this is what he is doing to get her to not be a pig. I'm not even, like, it's not even, it's kind it's a little, it's a little dumb. <laughs> it's yeah. a little weird. So on um, the right map, this yeah. guy's got like infinite range on the wrong map. He can't see anything, but still pretty cool. I'm he guessing he's going to be opposing characters pretty in the line of fire. Is that his thing? So he targets everybody with it. Yeah, so, yeah, and it doesn't see good. through, it doesn't through, see through characters, and it doesn't see through elevated or blocking, so, I, I mean, see. it'd have to be spaced out right, but if you start with mind control and incapacitate, yeah, uh, you just mind control all of them, or give everyone a token, and then you've got colossal stamina, so you could push to your pen psi if you wanted to, or I don't know how his dial's set up, but. It's pretty cool. I am... Let's see the figure gallery here really quick. I'm 90% sure we've seen the dial top of this figure, I want to say. Um, and I think he's only 45 points. I want to say. I might be wrong. Um, but I zero, think he's zero, cheap. Five. Um, which means he might be... <laughs> hey, Batman, welcome to the Avengers, you know? like. Right. Uh, and then that would give him an insane map boost is what you'd want to. Well, at least until July, uh, as long as, you know, when the giant girls are cheap and all that jazz. Um, but yeah, hopefully he does not start with pen blast right away. I hope he has like an eight oh, that'd attack, be awful. Yeah. zero damage, mind control. Like, okay, sure, he can mind control us, whatever, that's fine. The skull could mind control us from across the board. That's, that. I would be okay with that. Um, I hope it's, I really hope he does not start with pen blast. Oh, that would suck. At least with the Man. skull, it was relegated to like one figure. 
yeah. mind controlling your entire opposing mm-hmm. character. I mean, then you just have to play WWE, so you can't do it at all. Yeah, just play WWE. Easy. Can't mind um, control me, Batman. <laughs> but that Batman is seriously nuts. He can get pretty out of hand pretty quick. Uh, so yeah, that is all of Gamma. Overall, I liked it. I liked what we saw at Gamma. Um, it wasn't as impressive as Gamma's in the past for stuff I cared about, but the fact that I know I'm getting the EarthX Fantastic Four, which hopefully that means we get uh, an EarthX thing, and maybe he'll spit out um, his Thing 1, Thing 2 pogs, his uh, twin boys that he has. And oh, yeah. That would be really cool. And a, a shout-out to House Rules Gaming, oh, yeah, whoever House that Rules is. Gaming. Got them Not all sure. up. Got uh, uh, uh yeah. In good time. So that was pretty awesome. That was that was pretty great. Moving on, we have uh, ooh, I better double check who this is from before I see it. Eternal Games. Eternal Games on Facebook showed us the rest of the primes: the Crimson Avenger, Micron, and then Parasite. I'm gonna be talking about Parasite here. He is Legion of Doom, Metropolis Society, Supervillain, Superman, Revenge Squad, Monster. He's 50 points. Uh, he starts on click six, so he is a vampire of sorts. His top dial which would mean healing up five clicks to get there, has an eight sidestep, 12 attack, special attack power, 20 defense with toughness, four damage. He starts with a eight charge, 10 attack, precision strike, 17 defense toughness, and then three damage with shape change. He has toughness his entire dial. Uh, He has sidestep on his last three clicks. He has precision strike his entire lower dial. He has shape change on click four, on clicks four through seven, and then no damage power. Otherwise, uh, he gets sidestep on his top two clicks, and he has a special attack power on his first five clicks. Once you heal, you'll get that attack power. So he has two traits in the attack power. His first trait is Plasticity, Steel Energy. Paris start, starts the game with click six. When he uses Steel Energy, he instead heals one click for each special power and one click for each two standard powers displayed on the hit target style. So you can heal up more than just the one with Steel Energy. Uh, so it's instead of, so he doesn't heal the one for steel energy. He instead heals one for every two standard powers and then one for every special. So you can heal up more than just one at a time, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming if he hits someone with three special powers, it says he instead heals one click for each special power for each. So So, yeah, I imagine he could heal three potentially. There's not a lot of characters out there with that kind of stuff, but so if there's someone with all them special powers, Hey, that's pretty cool. And then of course, they all have to be, I believe it says printed, blah, 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 standard verse, displayed on the hit target style. So yes, they have to be displayed, so printed. And then his second trait is, I can do anything you can do. I can do anything, blah, 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 blah. When Parasite hits the close attack, which is pretty much all he's going to be doing until he gets his special power later, after resolutions, you may choose a standard power printed on the hit character's card. Note it, uh, Parasite can use the chosen power. So I don't know what they mean by note it, like... Um, do you want me to write just, it down somewhere? I don't. Yeah. I don't think I was supposed just to keep take track a pen of it. Paper. Just keep track of it somehow. They uh, Parasite, recommend you do Calder because games ooh. end after a hundred points over the build. That's right. You're supposed to be constantly tracking points. Constantly tracking effect. that stuff down. Uh, anyways, and blah blah blah. He can use the chosen power, so that's pretty cool. He gets to steal a power. It's very parasite of him. Uh, whenever parasite takes damage from an attack, after resolutions, choose a choose a noted power. Uh, Parasite can't use that power from any source until he chooses to note that power again. So, this the noting. I think they've used this word before. It's just it's very weird when he, when it's like used three times in one one thing. So I assume we cannot note more than one power at a time. From no. what I understand, <laughs> yeah, like. But he says, like, can't use that power. Like, it says, choose a noted power. I'm like, do you mean the noted power? The only power I think we can use at a time, I believe? Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. Very cool. Uh, and then his special attack power that he has once you heal up uh, is Precision Strike. And then he has a range value 6. So, I guess he always has Precision Strike. Uh, but he does get a range value, which is pretty cool. Uh, his stats are pretty mediocre. He has an 8, 10, 17, 3 on his starting click that you will actually, like, have. So... It's a little rough. Uh, His stats just go down from there. Uh, He slowly... Like, you have to heal three clicks before you get to an 18 defense. Um, But then you are rewarded fairly quickly with a 19 and then a 20 defense. But for 50 points, Superman enemy, uh, he is your rare prime. I'm not going to lie. I thought this guy was crazy cool because I thought... 
I didn't notice he was a vampire right away. And I was like, there's no way that top dial is 50 points. He is indomitable, which is pretty cool. But I like vampires. I like playing vampires. I think he's kind of a fun take on vampires, especially since he can heal more than one, which is kind of like what Rune could do as well, which I really dug that. So uh, I can't wait uh, to play this guy. I think he's going to be really fun. Soon. Yeah. I don't think there's been a prime that needed the Auk Arms more since Vulture. If you give this guy Auk Arms, and you could, I mean, depending on who you hit, you could be on click one after your first attack. Um, not to mention you're probably going to want to flurry so that you can swing with that ten attack twice right. and maybe steal a couple powers. I don't know. Uh, plus the improved movement and yada, yada, yada. You know, all those stuff. Yada, all right. Yada, yada. So... Skipping forward um, to today, uh, today, around 12 o'clock today, a uh, good friend Hi Devin you. Adams of the Happy Little Hero Clicks channel previewed Amazo, uh, some monkey guy, and Brainiac. Um, mm. Ultra Humanite is the name. Ultra Humanite. More yeah. human than you are, Simeon. So, to go along with Parasite, I'm going to talk about the non prime which is 041A Amazo. This is the rare Amazo. Ooh. Now, keep in mind, as I talk about this, it is a rare that uh, someone will pull in their rare slot while they are opening boosters and Ooh. potentially playing a sealed. Oh It'll be rare. Uh, so Amazo's got the team player team ability, which is the wild card. He's got a range of 7 with 2 lightning bolts. He comes in at 290 points or 150 Ooh, it's, points. It's beefy. Yep. So, already, 290 points means he's your whole build in Sealed, unless you pull real well and you also have a chase somewhere. Um, Keywords are Justice League, Cosmic, and Robot. He has improved targeting through hindering, and he has no special powers, just two uh, traits. He has weakness to chaos magic, protected outwit, except from characters that are higher points, not going to happen in this set, or have the mystical keyword. Maybe. We haven't seen a mystical keyword without wit. Um, but at 290, he will be the highest point figure in the set as far as we've seen. Even Darkseid was only 200. Uh, then also, characters with the mystical keyword modify damage plus one when attacking only a Mezo. So he's got the weakness against mystical characters. His second trait is cosmically evolved power adaptation. At the beginning of your turn or after resolutions when a Mezo takes damage... You may choose a standard power that a character within range and line of fire can use. If a Mezo is 109, or 290 points, you may choose an additional character and another standard power that character can use. So, this says, after resolutions when a Mezo takes damage, it doesn't specify from an attack. So, you could potentially push him to get two powers. And, uh, yeah, you just get to use those. Um, so... Let's look at his stats. He starts with, at 290 points, he starts with a 12-speed running shot. He has flight symbol and indom, and he's standard-sized. So, 12-speed running shot with a 12-attack pensai, 20 defense with invincible, and a 4 damage with perplex. So you can instantly give him a 13 for 4 and split that between two characters. You can give him an 8 range. You can give him 5 damage. Second click... He drops speed to an 11, 11 attack, same running shot Pensai combo, a 19 defense with Invincible, 5 damage now without wit. Uh, then he drops to a 12 speed charge with Steel Energy, 18 Invincible, and more penetrating with Exploit now. And then he copies that over to his next click, also dropping to an 11 attack, uh, and still 5 damage. So... This guy, at 290 points, he might get swarmed, but with your Perplex, he can easily have a 21 defense. So, in Sealed, um, he's just going to be... Because the thing is, even if you hit him, you better hope that nobody within his like range and line of fire uh, can use something like really cool, like uh, Steel Energy or Regen or Shape Change, because then he's just got that... Yeah, and, and he can pick it twice, so you really don't want that. Uh, let's go to his 150-point line. For 150 points, you get an 11-speed hypersonic with precision strike, 18 invincible, and 3 damage perplex. So still not bad for 150 points in sealed because he still has that uh, 
stealing power kind of thing and he still has the protected outwit and there's not going to be a lot of people over 150 second click he has the exact same powers except for impervious with an 18 and outwit with a three damage again and then he moves on to sidestep for the rest of his dial with two clicks of pulse wave another click of precision strike and then one click of steel energy at the very end he goes from impervious to invuln on his last three clicks with 17s all around uh, three damage his entire lower dial but uh, I don't think if you're if you're on your lower dial and you were playing him at 290 you either I mean you either like uh, just have already beaten a couple of people really bad because he's gonna outrange almost everything in this set and yeah. especially with his 12 speed that means he's moving you know his his from your starting area he's got a 13 attack range uh 14 if you perplex something so he's definitely going to get like the first attack off whether or not he hits is you know maybe not and then if they don't close the gap at the beginning of your turn you can pick some powers so he's definitely got some benefits there i just think this guy is going to be awful to play against in sealed and awful to see in battle royals because he will absolutely... Oh, he's going to suck in Battle Royals. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Him and Darkseid are just going to slaughter. It's crazy, because like that's a rare pull in a Battle Royal. Oh, that's going to be rough. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's going to hurt. Compared to that, oof, oof. you could get the Hawk Girl rare that right. has an 18 combat reflexes. And guess what? Oh. Uh, Amazo can steal that combat reflexes. That's the other thing. If he's within he's range, guy. he could get combat reflexes and energy shield, potentially. Yeah. And then just have a static 22 defense. Um, hope there's some cheap pulse wave in this set, because you're going to need it against him. Well, we got Speedy so far. Another rare. The once per game pulse wave guy. Yeah, so there got, you go. You know, Speedy. Yeah, yeah. So it's only once per game. Uh, hopefully you don't have to hit him more than that. No, you're going to have to hit him way more than that. All right, cool. And that is our news for the week. We had a lot of other Just League spoilers, but there's already so much in news. And we also need to talk about um, the article WizKids posted, which is the Modern Age 2020 Modern Age Rotation. So here we go. This is going to be uh, what is no longer legal after July 1st. So did you note this rotation occurs after the 2020 WizKids National Championships that's going to take place in Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio from June 17th to the 21st, 2020. The five-figure booster sets that we'll be rotating are going to be DC Elseworlds, the Mighty Thor, Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls, Star Trek Away Team, the original series, Xavier X, X-Men Xavier School, and Avengers Infinity, which will leave the last... Um, modern set is going to be i believe batman the animated series will be the last five figure booster modern set the stutter sets that are going to be going is going to be the elseworld starter the mighty thor starter and the star trek away team starter the micro sets is going to be undead thor ragnarok and teenage mutant ninja turtles unplugged so goodbye shredder clones all that stuff now for some reason the unplugged starter set isn't there. I think was that a fast force is not a starter. So I think it might be later. Um, the convention exclusives. This is where it kind of gets interesting here. All the 2017 convention exclusives. So Sinestro, Doomsday, Superman, Muhammad Ali, the boxing ring, plastic man, bat Knight, Zeus, uh, the invisible plane, Titano, ape, Superman, ape, flash, ape, green lantern, ape, Batman, the whiz kids, uh, juggernauts, professor X juggernaut, the giant man, spirit of vengeance, spider carnage, captain America. It's the earth X captain America, spider Gwen, the pim particle tank, and Thank the God. Pim Pocket Tank. <laughs> Thank goodness, yeah. Uh, Dormammu, uh, Deadpool's Merc Gent, Serpent Spider-Man, Serpent Punisher, Serpent Moon Knight, and Serpent Daredevil. The Quick Start Kit, Iron Man Thor, and Captain America will be rotating. The Cyber Shredder, Pizza Face, and Bebop and Rocksteady will be rotating. And the 2018 convention exclusives and early retiring for the Blackbird, Colossus ID, Professor X ID, Banshee, Psylocke, Rogue, Angel, Beast, Cyclops, uh, Iceman, and Jean Grey IDs, as well as the Days of Future Past, Wolverine, Kate Pride, Colossus, Rachel Summers, Storm, and Magneto IDs. 
and DC isn't getting away with it either. They're also getting rid of the Harley Quinn, the Joker, Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy, and Two-Face IDs. Uh, and now the monthly organized play kits. Uh, they're getting rid of the Avengers one, which with Falcon, Kate Bishop, Miss America, the X-Men, Polaris, Havoc, and Banshee, the Hunters, Power Girl, The Flash, the Colossus, Storm, and Blink one, and then the Scarlet Spider, Dr. Voodoo, and Synapse one. And they say, note, as of July 1st, 2020, no ID cards will be legal in modern age. To accomplish this, we are rotating the WizKids Blackbird slightly earlier than it might have normally expected, along with all the other 2018 limited edition ID cards. So, uh, first of all, before we get into the ID card stuff, what is a figure you're going to miss July 1st, Simeon, from... Uh, Thor, Harley Quinn, Avengers Infinity, X-Men Xavier School, or Star Trek? So, there's so many of these that, like, I forgot were even, like, modern legal because I just never played them at all. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm going to miss the boxing ring. The minus two to range attack while you're in the boxing ring was crazy good. Um, the, I mean, I guess if it was, like, inside or outside depending on where the attack was happening so i'm definitely going to miss the boxing ring also i just liked having it on the map it's just like a cool i like terrain i really do it's one of like the one of the few things that WizKids has done that like is competitive elements and i just really like uh some star trek stuff that i'm gonna miss is uh the entire original series stuff um the Orion females with like their mind control. I'm gonna miss uh, the Chase Sulu with his free blades. Uh, I never got a Chase Kirk, so can't miss the close combat expert thing. Star Trek. Wow, I kind of don't care. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, also, all of the turtles are gone yeah. from modern now, so Officially. I didn't realize Unplugged was that far along. So and Krang also will means be there rotating. There's gonna be no modern age turtles. Just yeah, out. and there's no turtle set planned, so this yeah. might be all she wrote for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I have a feeling uh, we'll be we'll be seeing them again someday. I uh, hope we do. In, probably you know, not seen Trek again. Um, I hope I think, we never see Star Trek ever again. I'd be okay. Well, with wish granted because uh, they did not yes. sell very well. So, yes. Yes. Uh, not no plans for future Trek. I don't think. Um, mm. Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. I'm really going to miss Big Tony. I'm really going to miss uh, Title Harley and Title Joker no, to a not. lesser extent. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. You're going no! to miss Big Tony and Title Harley. Ugh, you know how many those. teams I built I in the last year so much. with Big Tony. I hate those people so much. Uh, I'm going to miss uh, the only two figures in that set I cared about, but I played them a lot, which is uh, Kite Man, Hell Yeah, and then Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse. So they're going to be a bummer. Uh, Thunderstrike. I've still only played Thunderstrike once from the Mighty Thor. I need to play him again soon. Yeah, the um, figures I missed yeah. from the Mighty Thor I already sold off, so Ooh, this guy. I've been missing those for a while. <laughs> um, I won't miss all the retail that Mighty Thor had. I won't at all. Or that uh, Avengers yeah. Infinity had. So yeah, same. I've so still long. never played all the Captain America principled teams I wanted to. I think I played them once. I, I need to play him in modern age. Oh, you wanted to goes. build, like, a full in-cap team? Yeah, I basically just want to build a really big in-cap team with that Captain America. I built teams around him, like, a ton of times. Um, I'll throw Q on it. Try it again. No, That's I a good in-cap piece. Nah, Q can suck it. I hate that guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to miss anything from X-Men Xavier School, though. Like, I don't think there's anything I cared about in that entire set. I'm just going to be happy that I can probably finally finish out the apocalypse chases oh cool yeah it'll be a lot cheaper yeah um i am sad that the blackbird is rotating early just because i don't like the precedent that it sets of like conventions rotating early i don't like the thought of like there's like a lot of people that buy conventions whether they buy it at the con or they buy it secondhand there's a lot of people that spend like a decent amount of money on those yeah just to see them go like earlier than they thought um plus i never really played the blackbird more than just like casually as like a x-men yeah. taxi so i always wanted to play it just once competitively as like a full id battery 
and I kind of missed the boat on it, so that's fine. I played it as an ID battery a few times. It is fun. I actually, I really, really liked the Blackbird because I really liked the Quinjet, um, but the Blackbird doesn't have the staying power the Quinjet does or did, I guess. So yeah, that that was the only rough part about the Blackbird. I think the Quinjet was a lot better, a lot better of a call-on battery. Um, but I guess that's that's partial to Ultron Jones and everything else helping out. So getting rid of an entire game element, early rotating it, instead of letting there be a couple of ID cards for, this would have been until, what, 2018 ID cards? So 2021, whenever uh, yeah, these yeah. would have rotated. Instead, they're going to rotate them a year early. So it um, would have just been, I don't know if Days of Future Past would have fallen, but the DC I ones don't think were comms. Should be there either, but and yeah. then the MVIDs for the Blackbird would have been under like convention exclusive, so those would have lasted. Yeah. The so just getting rid of IDs. What does that mean for the competitive game? Which I guess I only sort of care because I do go to competitive events. I know we don't talk competitive a lot on this show, um, and I liked IDs. Um, the only time I never like I had a problem with them was when my opponent had characters like zero attack, right? Like they have literally a printed zero attack, but they kept calling in people to kill my stuff. That's the only time I don't like ID characters. It's like, ah, this sucks. Like I totally have you beat, but because you can power action, bring someone in, whatever, you know, like that does kind of suck. Uh, otherwise normally, you know, I like using them. I use them on, I mean, obviously every competitive team. I know you didn't the last time you played a competitive game, which is very cool. And you did very well uh, for not playing any ID characters, which is great. But this makes characters like, uh, Sheriff Strange, just no need to put him on your team. Yeah. He's obsolete now. Uh, even for mystical. Yeah. He's counter. Yeah. He's not really going to do anything solid after rotation. Uh, this makes what colossals we have, way scary so you're like oh but we're getting rid of mangog and surter and blah 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 blah. but yeah but we kind of have something called you know dark phoenix and storm and wendigo and tri sentinel uh yeah. like uh there's still plenty plenty oh my gosh plenty of colossals to go around and the best part about id cards was that they poofed off the board and the colossal had no one to retaliate against so you know, it's going to make Colossals way tougher. I think we might see more mind control because this is also a way of getting rid of Colossals without having to worry about your guys taking damage. So, uh, like, that's, like, the one main other way to counter, like, a Colossal from retaliating is just using mind control. But, man, no ID cards. Besides I think, yeah. a Surge of Colossals, do you, like... Because I just... I think the Surge of Colossals is just going to happen. It's going to be insane. If there's a surge of Colossals, we'll see a surge in Vulture players again. Mm, um, for sure. I Vulture see, does yeah. extremely well against like swarm teams like that. And now that there's no IDs to like call in and TK out, you'll have to build your Vulture team probably anti-theme. That's the other thing that no IDs brings. It's going to be almost impossible to destroy most equipment now without really yeah. overextending one of your characters. Yeah. Um, there were a couple successful builds with the collector where you'd just like TK them out, free equip, whatever their object was, and then phase back. So that's still an option. Um, it's still like an option to like TK someone out and have them like psychic blast and they don't even need psychic blast, but just have them like shoot an object if it's like exo specs. But I think mm -hmm. the days of destroying awk arms are gone. And so Vulture teams don't have to worry about that anymore, and they can kind of take their time. And that's... I think that'll keep a ton of Colossal Retaliation spam in check. Uh, not yeah. that I like either, like, option. Um, and then the other, like, interesting thing is Jason Wingard is going to be basically the only, like, pseudo id kind of thing that we have mm -hmm. where you'll have this like sideline of characters you can choose from um so like whether it's you know miles and gwen or like cosmic enclave and you just call them in and run those out and psychic blast stuff instead uh, you don't get them off the board but you also don't get retaliated on as hard because they're halfway across the map from you yeah those are going to be good. Um, I know one thing about my Jason team, 
my Jason team, someone else pulled it for me, whatever, uh, Jason team I played, was that I wanted more space on my sideline just for characters that had pogs. And now that definitely opens it up with no call-in options anymore. So might as well have as many pog people on your sideline now. I mean, might as well have, like, that was 90% of someone's sideline anyways. Like, they almost always just had, uh, whatever, call-in characters, like ID cards. And now it's going to be mostly trouble alerts or, you know, there's no crazy competitive shifting focus going on right now. But, like, that is going to be the bulk of people's sidelines. And I'm totally okay with it. I... I'm fine with ID cards going, but from a game balance perspective, we're going to need some stuff to keep Colossals in check. Yeah, Just and Trouble Alerts like... work the way that ID cards should have, where it's like, I've missed three attacks, I'm in trouble, I need to call in help. You know, like, there's, I don't know, the the fact that you could call in an ID card as your, like, only action for that turn just always seemed silly to me, like, that's not how comics go. That's not how fights go. You don't like call in. I, mean, I guess you could like call in an airstrike, but that's not really the same thing. It's like uh, I mean, the Avengers like straight up use those cards as like a telephone to call people, though. Like right, but they stayed they in they there fought instantly. the battle. Yeah, yeah, they stayed yeah. and fought the whole battle. They didn't like. All right, well, I threw one punch, Captain America. See you later. I'm like, all right, thanks, like, Iron Man. Thanks yeah, for flying get, by. Get like teleported out of there. Um, yeah. No, I. I agree. Uh, I think that Jason's pretty sweet uh, post-rotation. I think that a lot of Colossals are going to be bad news for a while, but there will probably be other options. I mean, I don't think Colossals are going to be that much worse than they already are. Um, But that's just my opinion as, like, a not-super-competitive person. Yeah. So fun. Uh, what this means for the normal game, like uh, the every week, it means that that one person who brings ID cards to a normal, friendly, like modern, <laughs> casual game, uh, a modern game, yeah, excuse me, isn't going to be bringing ID cards anymore. So if you had a problem with people who are like bringing ID cards and stuff, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Or after yeah. July 1st, anyways. And, and this I is, yeah, super. Really go, uh, go. Super go, pat Simeon. on the back. <laughs> Super pat on the back for whiz kids because after giving them enough grief about the read the back of the cards thing and how that doesn't really do anything for new players, this actually does. New players not having to worry about what all your sideline characters do, but like only focusing on like what's actually on the map is going to be pretty big. Like uh, that is nice. So like you you might play against like a new player. Like let's say you're a real mean guy and you're playing against a new player. And he's like, I'm going to equip this, like, reality gem. And you're like, hold on. I, like, one map roll, I'm going to call in Gene and TK destroy it. And he's like, I didn't even see that you had a TK or knew that TK could destroy indestructible objects. Right. And then, you know, he's just, like, he's so soul crushed. And then uh, next turn you call in something and you psychic blast him for, like, five with Cyclops. And he sidesteps away. So he has, like, no, like recompense for that and he's like good thing i put mangog on my team i guess i don't get to use him <laughs> um this will be really good for new players it's going to cut back on not only like the cards they have to like read like you know they sit down and like they don't have to read just like what's on your main force but also your sideline it'll cut down on sideline so that'll be good super friends are kind of point sinky so even though like there'll be there is like a call in super friend for pulse wave and energy explosion and poison and all the stuff like outwit perplex prob there's all those like same super friend powers that you would tk that's also one um all the same powers that you would id card they're a lot harder to get on the board you can't get them on the board as often and you lose quite a bit of points when they die so I think the shift over to like super friend kind of mechanic is way better than the ID card mechanic in the long run. Yeah. No, I can agree with that. Right on. Yeah. Uh, If there's anything else we want to talk about, about like, we're probably going to have to be talking about rotation again in a few months. I just know 
just because it, once it actually gets that time, we'll, we'll bring all the same conversation back up, but we're going to talk about it now because it's new. Um, so, yeah, that is rotation, and that is it for news. If we don't want to say anything else about that whole fun rotation list, no? Good. Nope. Fantastic. Awesome. So that brings us to our Patreon ranking up ceremony, second episode uh, in a month. I think this is maybe the second or third episode in a month. Either way, uh, we're doing it now. So moving up to rank of vigilante is going to be Aaron Johnson and Chance McCall. The rank, oh, oops, sorry. And also Peter Marshfield are also going up from vigilante so good job guys going from vigilante to protagonist is going to be aaron lloyd and jeff polier going up from protagonist to superhero or supervillain so write in if you want to be a superhero or a supervillain let us know is going to be taylor ward and we have two that's right ladies and gentlemen two super fans this month people going up uh from superhero slash supervillain to super fan is going to be ben jones and mock taskmaster thank you guys so much for supporting us on patreon if you haven't checked it out uh seriously anything else dollar a month uh it lets us do a lot of unboxings for the youtube channel it lets us uh you know upload consistently every single week for you guys because we love making the show podbean has a little a little stipend that likes to take our money a crippling debt of the 25 dollars a month of podbean and then we also give out stickers and tokens and all sorts of stuff so the more people that jump on patreon the more stickers and tokens and whatever maybe t-shirt whatever you guys uh want i'll be able to send out for you guys we also do giveaways every month which is really awesome uh and while i'm on the subject sort of not really or at least while it's in front of me March 21st is going to be the end date. Uh, snow, rain, whatever, shine. No matter what happens, March 21st is when we're going to do the Captain America Win a Brick Tournament. Yes, that's right. You can win a brick of the latest Captain America set. To celebrate Captain America's uh, nine years since he's had a full booster set, it's going to be 400 points golden age. All figures must have Captain America in the name or real name Steve Rogers. Entry is $10. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., uh, and we're giving away a brick of Captain America. Uh, we have eight people signed up so far. I'd like to get at least 10. If not, whatever. We're doing it March 21st. We're going to be starting at 10 a.m. We'll get everybody figured out, all the teams figured out, all the blah, 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 tournament stuff figured out. We're going to play three rounds, uh, probably catch the top four or something like that. And so, yeah, it'll be a really good time. Uh, it's kind of about how I always play uh, basically teams that are just Captain America. Uh, other legal things besides figures... Uh, I didn't say figures only. I just say all figures must have what are Captain America in the name. So you can use the Infinity Gauntlet, but only to equip it to the Infinity Gauntlet Chase Cap. You can use the Time Gem, but only to give it to Time Gem Cap. You can use the Asgardian Shield, only give it to the Asgard Shield Cap. But you can use the Age of Ultron Captain America ID, because that is a thing that is just straight up called Captain America. So you can absolutely use it. So yeah, message the page if you want to get entered. Um, you can use... Any, I believe we said, like, modern age Marvel maps. So go for it. Message the page. Let us know. We'll download all the images you need. And we'll can't wait for that tournament. It's going to be this Saturday, March 21st. If you can make it, that'd be awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it. But seriously, think about it. It's going to be tons of fun. Uh, $10 at a chance to win a Captain America break. Everybody is pulling from the same pool of figures as you are. I like my chances. Uh, you don't have to have the figures. It's all played on Discord and Roll20, so you don't have to own any of these figures in real life. It's all over the computer, my guy. Technology, how does it work? Boom. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move on into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Community Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, we go ahead and ask you guys a neat little, uh, a neat little question. Simeon, what would, what would we ask the fine listeners this Tuesday, this last Tuesday? This Tuesday was with the JLU set coming soon. Will you be chasing or passing on the team up cards? Simi, and what are you doing? Uh, also, for uh, HC Realms. It's way too early for the the thread, uh, the 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 pass or play thread, whatever it's called. Uh, hmm. I can't remember what thread it's called. The pumper dump thread. Yeah, the pumper Stupid dump thread. name. What a bad name for it. It's it's way too early for that. We don't even have half the set yet. Um, yeah. I was originally thinking about chasing these team up cards. I like the challenge. I like this is a set that I'm gonna probably want to complete. I loved the animated series, so I'm probably already gonna be buying enough to complete the set, and it's not gonna feel completely complete without every single 
team up card. You know what I'm saying? No. Also, no, the I fact you feel very complete without every single team. The up fact card. that Wizkid said most players won't be able to do it. That's just they're throwing. Are you saying that it's inciting a challenge? Right? Yeah. Now? How dare you challenge me like that, Wizkids? I will Why buy enough you of your product me? to go yeah. broke. Like, jeez. No, oh, I'm goodness. I haven't decided fully. I think none of them are crazy interesting. I'll probably yeah. completely forget about them while I'm team building. Um, I will make it make it a point to team build around the cards that I pull, and I'll probably try and pick some up in trades. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be spending like twenty bucks for the one really good one. I'm not doing that. Sure. Um, I am going to be probably getting all the Lex Luthor ID cards, and that is probably it. And maybe, you know, if I, I guarantee this is how it's going to go. I'm going to be building a team, and I'm going to realize there might be two characters that have an ID, or whatever, not an ID card, but a team up card. And I'll be like, oh, cool, so now I need to just get that somehow really quick, and I'll probably just, like, buy it, you know, whatever, the team up card. Um somewhere for like two or three dollars whatever it ends up being hopefully not too much but i guarantee i'll be like i'll just get all the lex luther ones and then you know halfway through realizing this team it has a team up card which makes one of them whatever better because that's the whole point so yeah uh i'm gonna go ahead go first here super fan ben jones says passing on some chasing some depends on the character Nice. All these one-word yeah. answers, I'm also just going to, like, skip over. People that just say pass or passing or whatever. Like, I get it. It's a super easy, like, one to answer. But uh, yeah. give us some meat. There's also, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of downers on Facebook. Yeah, a lot that of downers. Are like, what the heck, guys? I hate DC. Uh, no. <laughs> so, first on Facing Facebook, cereal this morning. Tyler yeah. Murin says, Being a huge Flash fan, I chase the Flash's team-ups. Any others would just be icing on the cake. I also really dig Shade, and any of his team ups will be team ups like Lex Luthor. But if they become insanely overcosted on the secondary market, then I'll just have to live. I think there needs to be a limit. I'm just not sure what the limit would be at the moment. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see. I know if I pull up a, a pull a, a team up card in pre release, I will be posting it online for four hundred dollars. Mm. just to see you how would. crazy people are going to get. They're going to be like, ha, that team up car is not worth $400. And then someone will win with it that's not me, and I will say, give me money. Give me money. Protagonist Jedi Legend says, hard pass for me. They're great. Bring another element to the game, but it's more storage, more rules for me to store and the odd occasion I'll ever need or use them on. Sure, I totally feel that. Like, probably not going to use a ton of these you know? yeah i already like have like what is it like the 200 card box or like the little mm, deck yeah. box that you like can put your usually fit a whole set in um this will make me use like two of those and that makes me angry i will be curious to see once someone has collected all of them you know and that years it'll take hopefully actually not that long <laughs> putting all the cards in, like, one of those really, really, really long card boxes that they use for storing, like, the ton of magic cards, just to see yeah. the absolute mass in this set for how many of, plus normal cards, plus all these extra stupid team-up cards. I just can't wait to just see how big that looks once they're I did, all together. I did cut, like, most of my common Regenesis figure cards in half. So mm -hmm. if I was using, like, the not Jean Grey school like the 0 .01 version, I could just yeah. use like the one half. Or if I was, I could use like the special blue half. But I didn't have to have like 12 folded cards with me all the time because I hate that. I don't know why. I just really do. Uh, James Craddock on Facebook says, I will be keeping the ones that fit my style and the ones that are most powerful of similar builds. I will try and get other ones that match the above criteria I want the double date cards, and I expect there to be a grudge match team up card, which will be a must have. But I don't need them all. Those Martian Manhunter team up cards look pretty terrible. <laughs> so I think he's going by uh, 
between most powerful and so he's looking at like playability and also a little bit of like episodes that he really likes sounds like yeah so i can respect Hmm. that matt zerfi depends on the card and the abilities it gives there's bound to be a few team up cards that are better than others just depends on the characters they affect i mean those all certainly were words uh (laughs) Sorry, that's a little rude. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much a given. Like, some are going to be just ugh, awful, terrible, you know. Matty Grichunos says, Grichunos chasing... You butcher his name every single time. Is it, I no, will be... eventually enunciate no, it the you correct won't. way. You don't care. You don't and care. And then he will... You're just going to keep, just like... A light will shine down, and he will message me and say, you finally got it. And then I'll just... Ugh, Clip maybe. that audio, and I'll just play it so I never have to do it again. Jeez. But, <laughs> any, he says, Chasing reminds me of Atlas, and I loved... Oh, not Atlas. ATAS. ATAs? Additional team abilities? That yes, mean? that is what I'm... Okay. Oh, yep. ATAS. I was thinking it was a set. Additional oh team abilities, gosh. yeah. So the additional team ability cards <sighs> would come in <sighs> like slightly smaller than a character card sized card uh he says he loved atas still missing the cards for these if anyone has them lol and then he goes on to say alpha flight as guardian atlantis black lantern corpse fantastic four green lantern honor guard great lakes avengers generation lost hammer industries howling commandos justice league silver age justice league new 52 justice league dark justice league international legion founder monster society of evil phantom zone reavers robot rogue secret invasion secret six serpent society shadow pack squadron supreme squadron supreme of earth 712 strategic homeland intervention enforcement and logistics division the hand ufos white lantern corps wonders of the world wrecking crew and x-force so if you have those give matt grichunos a message awesome (laughs) i love it cp justice on twitter says honestly i'll likely chase him based on character at least that's what i'm trying to tell myself lol I can't. I can't. There's some that I've seen that I'm just like absolutely not, do not need. Like, yeah, it will do nothing for my team, but especially but like... It'll, it'll grow the, the local area and induce trading. Ooh, a team-up card. Wow. The enforced Highlander <laughs> bit is like the worst that part. That sucks. Being. That does Yeah. Suck. If I can't play like five Hawk Girls for like at 150 points, then what's the point of even you know, owning any of those team up cards. Uh, Jeff Bozeman says, I will be chasing the team up cards as I am a completionist at heart. I completed the Batman animated series and will eventually complete JLU. And he shared a picture of his completed Batman animated series. Those are some mighty fine looking super friends. Ooh, so super great friends. Vigilante Aaron Johnson says, sadly chasing all while Chance McCall makes fun of me for it. Hey, that's, uh, as someone once told me, that's the way it be sometimes. Simeon. Yes, I was the one that told you that. Yeah, uh, you. Citizen Peter Marshfield says, Jeez. most likely going to be passing on the set so far, as there's only a couple pieces that I want, and it's the Justice Lords and Ace, so I'll be passing on team-up cards. It's not bad news, um... Of course, there's always going to be people that pass on full sets, and yeah. I encourage that. Uh, this game would literally make most people go broke if they completed every single set that is released. But yeah, um, so I'm I'm encouraging that. That's that's not a bad idea. I 100% agree. Like, yeah. if you just don't care about a set, don't buy it. You don't have to buy it just because. Like, I know you want to stay competitive. Maybe you want to chase all the new hotness. Just get it later on the aftermarket or, you know, just play in pre-releases, whatever. You don't have to buy a case, you know, two cases, a brick, whatever, of every single set. You do not. No one's, like, got a gun to your head telling you you have to do this stuff. 
I, I've skipped a lot of a lot of sets, you know, and like yeah. I realized, you know, bought less of certain sets that I, I just didn't need. Bought more of other sets because I skipped other sets. It lets you be like, hey, you might be really excited for Spider-Man and might not really care about the Justice League at all. So it's totally cool to not buy any of Justice League and be like, well, I'm going to save up for Spider-Man or buy a bunch of Spider-Man. Like, that makes sense. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And if all you want is Dark Side and Mongol and like Martian Manhunter save your brick money and just buy yeah. them on the secondary just market straight up and buy yeah yeah you're way ahead of the game like most of the figures i want from this set are just super rares and chases which kind of sucks but like i'm not gonna buy a bunch of cases hope i pull them and do all this trading instead i'm just gonna buy the wonder twins whatever for a ridiculous hundred something dollar price probably not like i can just i can wait for the wonder twins trust me so but yeah I need uh, to buy last one 12 brainiacs 12 brainiacs Stat. here we go Oh yeah, uh, 120 points of Brainiac, brain power, no pants. Uh, Chris Mooney says, I'm probably passing on team-up cards, but I really like Darkseid. That was preview that Darkseid is great. And that is the last one I have on Twitter. I've got a bunch more on Facebook, so I'm going to go through them real quick. Uh, Joe Dunn says, hard pass. This feels like something that is going to be frustrating on the secondary market. There will be certain ones that will be important and hot for the meta. Like retaliators, others will be pretty lackluster. That is a completely, absolutely true fact. Um, most of these are not going to be useful in meta, uh, just because the restrictions and whatever else. Daniel Lennox says, "I love the idea of team-up cards and want the seven soldiers and Wonder, Wonder Woman ones. Wonder Woman ones. Wonder Woman ones. Uh, Wonder wa- 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 wa. Seven okay. soldiers, Wonder Woman ones." Uh, Jesse Cote says, pass. I think it's a great idea to promote booster opening, just not for me. Paul Cote says, pass. I'm mostly a pass for the set because I am running out of room to store figures already. I totally get that. It's hard to get rid of the ones you don't want and get the new ones. Alex Morse says, I'm definitely not going to try and collect the set, but I'll likely pick a few characters that I like overall and try to get the things that pair with them specifically. David Herberger says, I want them, I want all team ups that have AMAZO in all caps. Uh, Kari Sampson says, passing most of them likely. Uh, Steve Bombera says, I'll be passing for the most part. And Todd Butcher says, eh, I'll own what I pull from sealed events. Respect. Vince sure. Gentile shares a gif that is the, uh, the, Mad money uh, economics guy said that is. says <laughs> the peanut butter. Uh, <sighs> that's bye bye bye. The the stocks guy. Oh yeah 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 sure. Rick Ryan bye, says bye, pass. Bye, bye. And James Atkins, last but not least, says I'll be hunting them down. Seven Ooh. soldiers is my main want. And then there is a cock of a gun in the background because he's hunting them like Liam Neeson in the movie I'll take find you. Yeah. I don't know where you are. I have special skills. All right. That's awesome. Uh, that is Community Tuesdays. I realized I closed Twitter and I we're gonna pull up Jedi Legends question here. Just give me a second. In the meantime, I will play the bumper. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. I'm going to read how he wrote it first. Sound good? Yeah. Jedi Legend Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Stop clicks. If you're healing off a stop click by regen or support, it's negative one to your healing. Period. I agree with that part 100% because it's true. Yep. So yes, if you roll the one, you may not heal at all. You stop when clicking down the dial, but not necessarily when clicking up. Support does have a minimum two, um, but it is maybe a modifying the roll. How how is so? It, it, stop is worded when this character would be healed by regeneration healed. or support. It's healed one less click. One less. Okay, so there it is. So you're not gonna not heal zero with support. You might just heal one. So you will heal one less, but it is still a min- it's a minimum two, but you'll heal one less, right? Is that is that how I'm reading? That is it? yes, I'm understanding it. All right, cool. So with regen, you might not heal at all, but with support, you will at least heal one. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We got it. 
And so it's possible for like Ultron, I guess. I think he has regen on his stop clicks. It's yeah, possible for him to use Colossal Stamina with the Masters of Evil team ability. Like push to regen, heal one less. Like let's say he rolls a one or a two and then he ends up taking a damage mm. because he heals zero but takes damage from the push or takes damage right. from the push and then heals. What, That's I funny. Don't, but, Ultron hurting himself to regen. Yeah. Um, and other, it is it is good to note that that only applies to regen and support. So Steel Energy will heal one, and yeah. that is enough to get you off of a stop click. Any power that just says, like, free heal one or free, like, heal an adjacent character or heal, like, an adjacent character. There's some Yu-Gi-Oh characters. There's some inspirations. There's some, like, other random powers that heal people. Unless it specifies it is regeneration or support, you do not... Uh, modify it by one less click for, for stop clicks. So, that gotcha. is worth noting, I suppose. I love it. I love it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will bring our show to a close. Simeon, do you have anything to say before we go ahead and leave the listener to the rest of their daily lives? Wash your hands. Oh, jeez. Also, uh, Origins might be canceled. The world might be ending, Calder. I, I didn't don't know what is happening. About any of oh, this. my I gosh. I can't exactly buy toilet paper. To do Where is the, the beef? Show. There's no food in the store. This? I don't want to talk about this. I don't care. And with that, uh, Cool Stuff is brought to you. Uh, or, <laughs> no, we are brought to you by we, Cool Stuff oh, Inc. .com, where you can find Cool Stuff <sighs> in stock every day including your latest HeroClick singles and sealed products, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. Simeon, you're fine.